Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Elevate Your Soul podcast. Today, I am continuing on the Ayurveda series, talking about the three different doshas. So if this is your first episode listening to, or is the first time you're hearing about doshas, please go back and listen to my first episode, explaining a brief summary of the three different doshas to give you a better idea of where you may be, which dosha would be your primary, secondary, or third you probably will not know by now of hearing so little, even if you have listened to that podcast, but you might have an idea of where you're at. In this episode today, I'm going to tell you guys all about how and why we want to find an equilibrium and balance out these doshas and these energies within our bodies because when we are imbalanced and we have too much of one energy or one energy, element in our body, we end up getting sick. So Ayurveda is a huge umbrella term for holistic health practices that was developed in India over 6,000 years ago, and we're still doing it today. And it's very similar to the approach that yoga has, where we want to find equilibrium and create a relationship between the mind, body, and the soul. And we want to do that with the kapha, pitta, and the vata within our bodies. So usually what happens when we have too much of one dosha in our bodies, in the long run, we will become ill. We will develop symptoms and physical symptoms that we do not like. And it is not good for our mentality and our minds either. And what commonly happens when someone has excess of one of these doshas, they tend to do things and crave things that bring more energy of that dosha in their bodies, creating even more of an imbalance in their body. So it's almost like going after what you tend to resist will help you find more equilibrium within the energy of your body. And now saying that this isn't always the case, sometimes when you tune in, you are able to actually know what will bring you back to equilibrium and bring in more kapha if you you have too much vata or bring in more vata if you are too pitta or whatever the case may be. Sometimes you can become aware of these symptoms and what you need to do naturally, but most of us tend to crave more of what we are already in excess of. So pittas will crave more things that ramp up their pittas, such as spicy food and coffee, which is not good for them and which they need less of in order to bring in more vata and kapha in their bodies. And so in saying all this, before I go forward, I just have an important note to make is that a lot of people think they know their dosha, but it's actually just their current mental state and where their mentality is right now. So someone who's listening to this might think they are a vata dosha when really they might be a pitta or a kapha. They just have an imbalance and too much vata in their system, which we call their vikriti, their current state of where they're at in life right now, not their natural born constitution, which would be your prakriti. And a lot of people in the Western society are pitta and vata mentally focused. You know, that's the life we live in the Western world today. We get up, we get the kids ready for school, we go to work, we come home from work, we go to the gym, we come home. It's, you know, this rushing, 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 and that is vata. And then getting shit done, working hard, that is very pitta. So you want to focus a bit more on the structure of your body and the symptoms of your body to find your property, to find your natural born constitution because you cannot diagnose yourself with the wrong dosha and then treat yourself as if you have one dosha when really you are born as another dosha, it's not going to work. And then you're going to put yourself in more of an imbalance than a balance. So when you are in an imbalance of a mindset and you have too much vata or pitta in your mind, which we do have a lot of in the Western world today, you cannot change your mindset dosha just with food. You also need to make lifestyle changes 
and eventually you can change your physical body symptoms with food and herbal medicines. But if you're dealing with an imbalance of a dosha just in the mind when it's not your natural born constitution, well, you will need to make some lifestyle changes. And in saying that, I will go over some foods today that will help you balance out your dosha if you are too pitta or too vata or too kapha. I will go over which foods to avoid and which foods to consume more of to balance out the doshas. And first and foremost, why are we wanting to find balance? Why are we wanting equilibrium within the doshas and the elements within our bodies? Why can't someone be 80% vata and another person be 80% kapha or 80% pitta? It is so important to find the balance within the doshas within your body in order to avoid disease and to avoid getting sick and getting illnesses. Especially, I'm gonna go over today, the shadow side of having excess of one dosha. And we want to be aware of the shadow sides of these doshas so that we don't develop these physical or mentally bad symptoms that aren't good for us, negative symptoms, should I say, you know, more the shadow side. So, in saying all that, I'm going to dive straight into the episode now. I'm going to first tell you guys the symptoms of whichever dosha I'm going over, which are the symptoms of having too much and an imbalance of that dosha. And I'm going to start with the vata dosha. So people who have a vata imbalance and have too much vata, which is you know the air, the wind, the ether space in their bodies, they will have symptoms such as too much stress and anxiety, worrying about things that are irrelevant, scattered mind, inconsistent hunger, bloating, mood swings, insomnia, constipation, wind and gas, dry skin, dry hair, irregular periods, thrush, vaginal dryness, forgetfulness, easily fatigued, and so on. These are just some to list a few. First, warning signs of having too much vata in the body. And for the long-term negative effects that happen when we have too much vata in our bodies and we don't balance those out early on, the long-term causes for people who have too much vata are things like arthritis, cancer in the gut, tremors, anxiety and mental disorders, and Parkinson's disease. So I am going to give you guys a prevention plan for anyone who feels that they have too much vata in their bodies. I will give you guys a little prevention plan of how to balance out the vata in your body. First of all, I'm going to give you some lifestyle changes and or recommendations to give you guys. So for the vata, have early scheduled bedtimes. Dress warm and stay warm. Massage the body daily with sesame seed oil or almond oil. Have light exercise that enhances your balance and your flexibility. Drink ginger tea. Listen to calming music rather than sporadic, crazy, quick-paced music. Favor warm colors. Warm, humid environments are really good for you. If you're planning a holiday and you are very vata, go somewhere warm. Have lots of cinnamon in your diet and aromas such as lavender and vanilla are really good for you. Get lots of rest through the day and make sure you get enough sleep. For vatas, I suggest between 8 to 10 hours of sleep a night, depending on how much exercise and things you're having. But definitely vatas need the most amount of sleep out of all the doshas. And avoid cold drinks or foods. Now, foods that vatas do need, because the vata is air and space, they need, they need foods that are going to weigh them down and ground them, which is actually foods that contain a lot of kapha energy. So these are kapha-inducing foods for someone who has a lot of vata is really good for them. So foods for a vata, you're wanting to choose warm foods over cold food moist food over dry food, and stabilizing over light food, and smooth over rough food. The tastes for a vata are 
sweet and salty are really good for vatas with a little bit of sour. So we're wanting to have less raw fruits and vegetables, more grounding, cooked, kapha-inducing fruit and vegetables, such as pumpkin, carrots, beetroot, sweet potatoes, avocados, asparagus. Fruits for the vata, which are really good, are bananas, preferably the ones that are slightly more ripe and sweet, grapes, cherries, melons, pineapple, and mangoes, and other foods that are great for vatas to make sure that they don't have an imbalance and create too much vata are things like oats, rice, dairy, meats, tofu, and beans in moderation, so not too much tofu and beans for the vata. Eggs are great. Sesame seed oil, olive oil, almond oil. All nuts are good for vatas, especially almonds. Lots of cinnamon, cumin spice, lots of ginger, and black pepper in moderation. Foods that vatas or people with a lot of vata should avoid are things like popcorn, leafy greens, berries, especially cranberries, crackers, potatoes, dried fruits, pomegranate, broccoli, cauliflower, and spinach. And all of these foods that a vata should avoid have something in common. And the taste of those foods are bitter foods, astringent foods, which a lot of us don't know what astringent means, but you can look it up on Google. And usually this just means foods that are drying and have a lot of air in them and create kind of that dry feel in your mouth. The best way I can describe it is if you have an unripe banana and you bite into that, yeah, that nasty, dry, chalky flavor in your mouth. Vatas want to avoid that as well as spicy foods don't do too well with vata either. And when a vata is all balanced out nicely, they are beautiful people. They have beautiful personalities and characteristic traits, such as very, very creative, artistic people. They're emotionally sensitive, which is actually a good thing, and it's a gift. They are perceptive. They are spontaneous. They think outside of the box. They are compassionate. They have multi multifaceted interests and abilities. They are adaptable. They are good at multitasking, and they are very enthusiastic people. Now, moving on to the next dosha, I'm going to go through pitta. Pitta people. Their element is mainly fire with a little bit of water. And we want to avoid having a pitta imbalance as well because that isn't good for our minds or our bodies or our souls either. Common signs of having too much pitta in the body are things like diarrhea, heartburn, acid reflux, skin irritations, skin rashes, acne, smelly odor and sweat, fevers, jealousy, inflammation. They can be hypercritical. They can be very intense. They can be very obsessive. They'll have lots of headaches, irritability, anger. Women will have heavy periods, greasy hair, early hair loss, premature graying of hair. They'll be argumentative, overcompetitive, and attachment to material goods. In the long term, too much pitta can turn out to some nasty symptoms in the body, such as kidney stones, eczema, loss of vision, infertility, schizophrenia, domestic and physical violence, blood diseases, and stomach ulcers. So your little prevention plan of not getting these types of symptoms in the body and not having too much pitta in the body. Some great lifestyle changes or lifestyle recommendations you could have is to leave some free time and some white blank space in your calendar to eat fruits on their own. I know that's a random one, but they say don't eat fruits with your meals, eat them as snacks on the side. Balance rest as well with your activities. Do not skip any meals. Favor sweet, bitter, and cooling foods. Reduce spicy foods. 
drink coconut water, spend time in nature regularly, favor cooler colors, laugh a lot, in fact, laugh every day. Lavender, mint, and rose aromas are really good for the pittas, and if, avoid doing exercise in the heat. Pitta body types being mainly fire with a little bit of water need cooling foods and less heat-inducing foods. Tastes they favor and tastes that are good for people with a lot of pitta would be bitter foods, astringent foods, and a little bit of sweet foods. As a rule of thumb for pittas, you're wanting to have more cool food over warm food, favor mild food over sharp intense spiced foods and dry and dense foods over oily and liquidy foods. Vegetables that are good for pittas are things like cucumbers, potatoes, broccoli, celery, zucchini, and lettuce. Fruits that are good for pittas are cherries, melon, green grapes, coconuts, pomegranate, pineapples, and mangoes. Other foods that are great for pittas are coconut water and oil, oats, rice, egg whites, butter, milk, barley, wheat, chicken, and shrimp. Things that are really bad for pittas are things like alcohol. Yes, because alcohol is very heating in the body. Avoid spicy foods, avoid lots of garlic and onions, uh, energy drinks, of course, avoid red bell peppers, tomatoes, radishes, avoid lemons and limes, avoid yogurt, pork, egg yolks, and beef. And when a pitta person is beautifully balanced and brings out the light in them and avoids their shadow sides, they are very driven people, they are focused, they are committed, they are direct, they are strong people, they are enthusiastic, intelligent, and really fun to be around. And last but not least, the beautiful kaphas. Symptoms of too much kapha are things like low energy, feeling lethargic, weight gain, a white coating on the tongue, depression, hoarding, possessive behaviors, too much sleep, excess mucus, sinuses issues, hay fever, attachment to people or things, asthma, and swelling in the body, and long-term negative effects of too much kapha in the body are things like diabetes, obesity, thyroid issues, prostate cancer, goiter, glaucoma, just to list a few. So we definitely don't want too much excess of kapha energy in our bodies for a long period of time. So lifestyle changes that are good to keep for the kapha or someone with a lot of kapha energy would be to seek stimulation. Do not take naps during the day. Follow a routine. Stay warm and avoid dampness and damp environments. Practice a weekly nasal cleansing routine. Keep a clean and tidy home. Get exercise regularly, especially cardio or high intensity training. Favor bright colors. Eucalyptus, cinnamon, and juniper aromas are really good for the kapha. And try new things. Kapha being earth and water need lighter and drier foods, aka vata-inducing foods. Tastes that are good for the kapha are astringent, pungent, which is another way of saying spicy, but just foods that contain a lot of powerful energy, and bitter foods, but kapha should avoid foods that are more on the sweet, salty, and sour side. As an overall rule of thumb when choosing foods for the kapha, choose light foods over dense foods, choose warm food over cold food, choose dry over moist, and rough over smooth. Vegetables that are really good for the kapha are things like Brussels sprouts, cabbage, celery, fresh herbs, corn, eggplant, garlic, onions, and ginger. Fruits that are great for the kaffas are apples, peaches, cranberries, apricots, strawberries, and pomegranates. 
Other foods that are great for kaffas are things like beans, lentils, chickpeas, barley, millet, spelt, lettuce, spinach, chilies, bell peppers, tomatoes, berries, and popcorn. Foods to avoid for the kaffa are things like dairy. Any sort of dairy isn't good for a kaffa. Bananas, dates, pineapple, melons, avocado, wheat, rice, and sweet potatoes. These are things to avoid for the kaffa. And when a kaffa person is beautifully balanced, they are the sweetest, most loving people on the planet. They are compassionate. They are patient. They are very, very sweet. They are easily forgiving. They are gentle. They are emotionally stable. They have a great, strong stamina. They are loving. They are extremely loyal and nurturing. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know there was a lot of information packed in this short amount of time that I had with you guys, but I hope you really enjoyed the episode. And if you're starting to enjoy more and more learning about the different doshas in Ayurveda and want to learn more, either contact me or do your own research. But I'd love to hear from you guys. If you want to get in touch with me, contact me on Instagram or Facebook. I hope you all have an amazing week ahead of you. Or if it's a Sunday, have an amazing week next week and enjoy the rest of your day or evening. Love you all. Bye.